Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well, viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Roddy! I'm Marty. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, everybody. Because we're on Turnabout Succession seven years ago, Trial, trial former. former. We're going for Phoenix Wright's last trial, which is a pretty great twist, if I must say, about the yeah, final case. Yeah, it's cool, it's cool. It's nice. We get the old music, we get old gumshoe. <sighs> it's nice. It's awesome. <laughs> Apparently the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. Just because he got the letter doesn't mean he went through with it. Oh, I disagree. The victim was, indeed, shot in the forehead, after all, just as he had commanded. It could be a setup, but let's not be in such a hurry. Maybe we should let the witness talk for a change. Thanks, pal. Fine, I can play it slow as well, I can play it fast. On with the testimony, Detective Gumshoe. Can we look at the court record real quick and oh, see that yeah. um, letter that Trucy gave us again? The notebook page? Yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing that's the thing that got forged. Quite possibly. Magnify's autopsy report cause of death, single gunshot to the, the head. The autopsy was forged. <laughs> Estimated time of death, 11 to 1130. Which is about right. 67, 11 to 1130, loss of blood from bullet wound, malignant tumor confirmed in victim's litter. Crime photo? That thing's terrifying with the clown in the background. Honk honk! <laughs> I hate clowns. Clowns are pretty bad. Attorney's badge. It's my all-important badge. It shows that I'm a defense attorney. <laughs> Magnify's letter. Come on the 13th of all the no 5 p.m. Shoot one shot square in the forehead. Yep. Small syringe used for administering insulin shots has been washed and shows no sign of use. Really? I always hated getting shots. I guess Magnify was giving himself the insulin shots. There's no way I could do that. <laughs> Wait! If Magnify uses to inject his insulin, why are there no traces of it having been used? Hmm, something to keep in mind. Magnify's chart diagnosed of a malignant tumor given three months touch a uh, check button. Patient's name Magnify Grammary 67, male, malignant tumor in liver has progressed to final stage with no hope of recovery. Patient has three months to live. Patient has chronic diabetes, requires regular insulin. Okay. Cool. Sorry about that. Uh, he ordered his beforehand. letter. Uh, he ordered his murder. And this letter was sent by the victim. There it is! Gotcha! You're all mine this time, pal! Huh? I had the handwriting checked out, of course. It's the victim's, no mistake. Ah, I see. Ha 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 ha! Score one for the boys! I didn't lose, I was just ascertaining the facts. So why am I so annoyed? <laughs> but a letter order in your own death? Fiends aren't what they used to be, I guess. I'm not sure this is exactly commonplace even now, your honor. So anyway, guess I'll keep going while I'm ahead. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. How can you be so sure? Hey, you gotta learn to stop relying on people to do your thinking for you, pal. Learn to think for yourself. Get that noggin cracking. You fail to grasp the concept of questioning, detective. First, we got this letter. It says, shoot in the forehead, loud and clear. I can see that, but I still wouldn't do it. Well, maybe you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal. You failed to grasp the concept of shooting people is bad, detective. <laughs> <laughs> we also found the defendant's pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue shows that it had been fired recently. Well, Mr. Wright? As far as I can tell from looking at this photo, there seems to be no issue with the prosecution's claim. The photo. Maybe there's something in there I can use. So they're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead. I think there's a hole in the prosecution's argument. Clearly, clearly, Mr. Enigmar, I have no clue, didn't pull the trigger, shot something else. Um... <laughs> what would he shoot instead? That doesn't make sense. Also, I have no clue. Is very accurate for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, nothing in this picture suggests he didn't do it. Ah, I see. 
That is unfortunate. Huh? Well, let's pay it no mind and carry on, shall we? I like a fast tempo. Huh? Hey, I still got stuff to talk about, pal. Everyone's so eager to move on, so of course I want to slow down. Is there really not a single clue in this picture? Back to the testimony, if you would, detective. The bolt was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. You mean this pistol, the one in the crime scene photo? That's the one! It's a funny looking gun, so there's no mistaking it. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. So, you verified the murder weapon, in other words. You bet we did! And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. Why are you so certain? What pile of sand is your guy who has your head been stuck in all this time, pal? You've never heard of Zack and Valance quick draw shoot him? Huh? What's that? One of the defendant's specialties. There's a girl in the troop? There's a girl this time. Uh, <laughs> Zack and Valance stand on either side of a girl. She looks... Then they shoot. She looks like uh, the mother of Vera a little bit. We haven't seen Vera's mother. Well, they look similar. They've got that similar worried look, and then they've got long hair, and if the thing was black and white or not... It could be blue hair, you're mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. <laughs> but the bullets don't hit her. Instead, they hit everything else on stage. This was one of the pistols they used in their show. Got a great design, huh? The kids love it. Many boys and girls joined the police because of that pistol, I hear. You know, that would explain a lot about the police force. <laughs> <laughs> Troop Grammary stopped doing that act a while ago. The old man held on to that pistol ever since. Cool. The court would like to see the pistol in question. You got it, sir. Here she is. Well, this truly is a blast from the past. It's a stage pi pistol for a uh, magic show, see? But it can fire real bullets. Hmm. It looks so much bigger in real life than on TV. Yeah, but it can only hold one round. By the way, the pistol's firing chamber is empty. And it shows traces of having been fired recently. So, were any fingerprints found on the gun? Unfortunately, no. Of course, the defendant is known for wearing gloves. We might say that a lack of fingerprints is, in fact, a fingerprint of its own. Aha! Intriguing point. Well made. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Not well made! Not intriguing! <laughs> In any case, the court accepts this evidence. Stage pistol added to the court record. My grandchild would get a kick out of seeing this. But now it's time to return to our testimony. I didn't have time to gather all the details before coming in here. This testimony might be my only source of information. Better pay attention, and read this letter carefully. Alright, let's go back here. Okay. Um... So you're saying he didn't pull the trigger? But that would make no sense. We don't know how to prove that, but shot something else? I don't know, but there's the ballistic markings on it still. Right. I don't really know which one it would be. People don't normally commit murder just because their teacher told them to. Which means the defendant didn't fire that pistol. Objection! This is your position, then? Um, well, yes. This is the sort of occasion when my brother would present some evidence. Ah. Did you have some evidence you wanted to show us? Something proving it wasn't the defendant who shot the old man. Penalty for excessive perspiration, Mr. Wright. <laughs> but it's a cold sweat, your honor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... Shot something else. Try it. Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. Yes? What does the letter tell us? That the defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse his teacher's wishes. Bingo, pal! That's why the defendant popped him one in the forehead. Oh, the defense disagrees. You see, the defendant had another choice he could make. Objection! 
What, and you can prove that with this photo? I can prove he had a choice, yes. The defendant might have fired like he was ordered, but he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're thinking, Mr. Wright. If he didn't shoot the victim's forehead, what did the defendant shoot? Shot up some- <laughs> Wait, no. No. <laughs> I might have to cut that out, actually. Yeah, please. Um... <laughs> that wasn't that funny. <laughs> what would he shoot instead? Maybe the IV bag? I don't know. Ah, I see. Which is to say, I have no idea what you're talking <laughs> about. Prosecutor Gavin? The defendant had a choice other than shooting the victim in the forehead. Perhaps I might suggest one. He could have shot this attorney in the forehead. Urk! What is it with Gavin and foreheads? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, I see. Which is to say, I still don't see. Still, when in doubt, give a penalty, I always <laughs> say. <laughs> uh, time to think this one through again. Um, would it be his sliver? Okay, how about you... Look for a place where there's a bullet hole. Look for Because a this was taken the after the guy was dead. There's the forehead. Then there's... I'm trying to see where there might be one. The clown? Is there a bullet hole on the clown? I can't... I can't tell. The clown doll? Take a closer look. See? It's been shot in the forehead, too. Ah, oh, there's a hole in its forehead. Yes, and a hole in the prosecution's claim. Ha, and I suppose you have a reason as to why he'd shoot the clown doll. He didn't just shoot the doll. He shot the doll's forehead. His forehead? Ah! Let's read the orders once more, shall we? You will shoot one shot square in the forehead. Which is exactly what he did. He shot the clown doll square in the forehead. I like how Gavin, because he's a novice, gets sweaty more quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. The defense has raised an intriguing possibility. That hole in the clown's forehead. It definitely looks like it was shot. And it's positioned exactly the same as the guy. Mm -hmm. Bailiff, send someone to investigate this matter. I admit I'm impressed, but I expected nothing less. Still, this doesn't mean he didn't shoot the victim. Perhaps he did have to shoot a forehead, as ordered. But the letter says nothing about whose forehead. This was the only way he had to follow his orders without taking a life. Hmm. The bullet hole in the clown doll's forehead does demand an explanation. Yeah, sorry, you don't get to voice anyone in this past trial sequence. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just trying to make sense of everything that's happening anyway. <laughs> right. It might very well be a clue, yet Prosecutor Gavin is right. It alone does not prove the defendant's innocence. You cannot say for sure the defendant didn't shoot the victim. So sorry, Mr. Wright. How sad it is to see the mighty fall. How sad it is to see the novice's overconfidence. He doesn't realize just how big this little hole is going to get. Detective Gumshoe, please take this newfound fact into account as you continue your testimony. So what if he shot the clown? He still shot the victim, pal. So let me get this straight. You're saying my client first shot the clown, then shot the victim? Hey! Not a bad summary, pal. More of a confirmation than a summary, but whatever. That was really more of a confirmation than a summary. <laughs> but our defense attorney seems pleased enough with himself. Do these people ever miss a chance to mock me? Well, now that Mr. Wright's gotten that out of his system, shall we continue with the testimony? I didn't have time to gather all the details before coming here. <laughs> Okay. So he it's still probably shot that the one. Yeah, because it got added on. What do we got? We've got an attorney's badge. Yep. We've got a crime photo. Uh, okay. We've got the nope. autopsy report, and that's not all. We've got the okay, notebook. Okay, you don't need to see it. Okay, we got the notebook page. Uh, Magnifi's chart. Um, the small syringe. Uh, does the syringe draw blood? It's a shot. It's a needle that you can inject things into. Okay, so not like, but not like not a gushing, bullet. yeah. Magnifi's letter, and then the stage pistol. Well, it can only, yeah, one just one. Yeah. Prevent that. 
The trickiest cases often seem the simplest. Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. If you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Y yeah but like I just said, pal. After we shot the clown in the forehead, he went and... ...did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol proves he could not. The murder weapon? How? It's quite simple, Your Honor. This pistol only holds one bullet at a time. Ah. If he had shot the clown in the forehead, he couldn't have shot the victim too. Yarrgh! Th that's not a contradiction. Not even close. All he had to do was reload the pistol after the first shot. Oh, where did he get the extra bullet? They're not so easy to come by, you know. If you claim the defendant had one ready, then prove to us how he got it. Dick! <laughs> I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. I love the original objection theme. Me too. No, this party's just getting started. And I haven't proven anything yet, beyond my good looks and startling record sales. An utter lack of humility. Hmm. Ah, what's this? It seems that the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said, Air Detective was just the warm-up act. Ugh. Now that the audience has gotten a taste of what's to come, they're ready. Ready for what? For my decisive witness, of course. A witness who, you will find, can prove one fiend for us. That it was Zach Grammery who shot the victim in the forehead. Very well. We will pause for a 15-minute recess. This might be my lucky break. I'll need that 15 minutes to talk to my client. Zack. Court is adjourned. Wait, really? <laughs> to be continued. We it's might have been able to do that last video. Yep, we could have, but it's fine. Let's Work. keep going. Go away. Go away. Normally, I like to end on the to be continued moments, but that's not Too happening. Too bad. Yet. Hey, they changed the painting. Yeah, you didn't notice that? I did now. <laughs> April 19th, 11, 21 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Very impressive, Mr. Wright. I have to say, I expected nothing less. We've only just begun. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about what happened, actually. I did not think you would believe me if I told you. Better that you discovered the truth for yourself. I was thinking of you, you know. I think we need less thinking and more talking. That night in the hospital, what really happened? Ah, the way your eyes gleam, Mr. Wright. You'll scare Trucy. Speaking of which, where is she? You have seen the problem yourself, the letter. The one shot in the forehead one, right? Yes, and the reason he speaks of. I could not deny my mentor's wishes, even if it meant my own death. Here's the one thing I don't understand. Zach Grammery was alive until his first death case in this first game, so why did Mr. Wright take Trucy? Indeed. That's what makes me curious. He might have gone ballistic. I mean, clearly he kind of was like, murder? Murder! He's like, murder? Yeah, I, I'm, okay. I'm all for it. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Why not? This is something I will not say. For now, at least. What's this for now business? I have done many things in my life. Some well, some poorly. Yeah, where's Trucy's mom? But this is a cross we must bear alone to our graves. We? You wanted to know about the night of the incident? Finally, this guy sure likes taking his time to get to the important stuff. Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. And found there upon his bedside table two pistols. Two? Yes, the one I had used on stage, and the one that had been used by my partner, Valent. Oh, for Zack and Valent's quick dropping. My mentor had the look of one sleeping. I stood by his bedside, hearing only the light sound of his breathing. Then I took the pistol into my hand. I cannot deny that my resolve faltered then for a moment. You faltered? You mean you fought about shooting him? Recall there was a reason I could not refuse his request. His last such request, though not his first. So, there were other requests you couldn't refuse before? To be honest, I've not always been steadfast, and I fear I've brought pain upon Trucy. 
Was Magnify coercing his disciples somehow? Just what was going on in Troop Grammary? Yet, in the end, I did not shoot him. Instead, I turned and shot the clown. I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. In your pocket? I believe if you examine the bullet in the clown's head, you will find it to be different than the one in my mentor. The... what were those called? Rifling marks. Yes. Well, that is all I have to tell you. Concerning the case. The problem is you took the pistol from the scene so we can't prove it was there. Right. That's the thing that's gonna take us down. Concerning the case? You mean there's something else you can tell me? <laughs> you are a fascinating man, Mr. Wright. Thanks? Yes, there is something. My mentor. His eyes opened. What? Magnify Grammary? The old devil. He was not asleep, you see. Of course the gunshot would have woken him anyway. And there we had our last discussion as mentor and pupil. It was not a long discussion. Maybe five, ten minutes or so. What did you talk about? Ha <laughs> ha! Mr. Wright, did I not just tell you? It does not concern this case. Zach Grammary, he seems pretty steadfast to me. Or maybe just stubborn. <laughs> Mr. Wright, uh, your presence is requested in the courtroom! Once again, I am in your hands. Right, let's get back in there. He's got maybe, the... maybe the nurse will be the other witness. <laughs> maybe a female nurse. Maybe. April 19th, 11.37 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 7. Court is now back in session. During our recess, a bullet was found in and dug out from the clown's head. Well, this is news. And the rifling marks? There wasn't time to do a detailed analysis. Though they didn't find the murder, uh, the weapon type that matches the murder weapon. Hmm. Well, that's not very ter very conclusive, is it? Which is why I'm about to call my very decisive witness. Your decisive witness? How many times have I heard those words? Though they often turn out to be far less decisive than you think. Oh, don't worry on my account. I'm quite confident this witness will do the job. After all, he is intimately Aww. acquainted with the players in our little production. Being the other half of Troop Grammary's famous duo, Zack and Valent. Come on! Valent Grammary. I wanted a girl! So we get to meet the great Magnify's other disciple. Sup? Perhaps we'll start by asking your name and occupation? Valent Grammary. Magician. Uh, and you're the decisive witness, are you? You can prove your fellow student, your partner's guilt. Fate, the grand illusion, filled with traps and tricks. W wait The shooting took place in that hospital after 11 o'clock that night! If you're a witness, does that mean you were there that late? If one were to deduce this logically, the conclusion is... Yes! Um... Okay. I always get the characters, don't I? I have an interesting fact for you. You see, several days before the crime, my witness received this. That looks very familiar. W wait That's the same letter Zach Grammary received! Yes, or perhaps I should say, ta-da! Whoa! <laughs> that pose. <laughs> Is he wearing a dress? He's wearing like the stage outfit. It's not a dress. <laughs> okay, but he's got like the blue thing underneath his yellow cape. Oh, oh, we'll see it again. I'll yeah. point out. Order, order, order. And what does it say? Surely not the same thing. Perhaps you should see for yourself. To my beloved student Valent, to you I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th, 11, 20 p.m. I will ready a gun for you which with which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse. And we both know the reason why. Yeah. <laughs> why? It's practically the same. So he was the one who killed him. Like, there's pretty much no doubt in <laughs> yeah. my brain. The court accepts this into evidence. Unless the doctor is like, <laughs> Yeah, that would not happen. He, he also got the letter. So did <laughs> to the doctor. I trust you. <laughs> so He so just sent the, one to everybody. So did the, his neighbor. <laughs> Gumshoe's like, I got one of those too, pal. <laughs> that was really weird. <laughs> It was like one of those chain letters. <laughs> Just increase the time the by 15 worst, minutes. <laughs> the worst timing. Magnifies letter 2 added to the court record. This is most unusual. Exactly what was going on with you folks? What exactly was your troop grammary up to? By which you mean? 
I'm just having trouble envisioning a man who would ask his students to kill him. Both of them, no less. It's just my opinion, Air Judge. But from these letters, I'd say he was coercing them, not asking them. We walked the magician's path together, and in doing so, shared much of our lives. When people are so close, there is a strain. A warping of relations, you might say. Oh, I just... This guy is basically Greg from The Wiggles, but with, like, really long yeah! hair. Yeah! He's a magician. Also, he looks like... <laughs> Um, the face, at least, looks like that dude from, um, Advance Wars with the wrench. Maybe? Andy? Maybe? Andy, Max. Max. Max has blue hair, though. But the face. Like, remove the hair. Maybe? Mm, it's I don't fine. See it's it. fine. <laughs> when people are so close, there's a strain. Yet this has nothing to do with the case at hand. By which you mean you're not going to tell us. Which makes me wonder even more about this reason they couldn't refuse. Well, let's get on with the testimony, for starters. The defendant, Zach Gremory, stands accused. Tell us why. Oh, I'll do more than that. For where he walks, the red roses rise, singing hymns to the miracle that is magic. Fascinating. Though I hardly need to remind you that the evidence could just as clearly point to you as the suspect. The letter, the murder weapon. And now the two bullets found at the scene. In fact, the only difference seems to be the designated time. <laughs> As every magician knows, timing is everything. Oh, what time was he called? 11.15? Um, so Zach was called 11.05, yeah. Valent was called 11.20. Yep. <laughs> yes, and now it's time to get this party fired up. The Night of the Crime. My Testimony. That night, I visited the hospital room at the time Magnify requested. The smell of gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final bow. I did not imagine my fellow student might have received the same instructions. Yet a deal with the dead is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss I gave to the clown. Then I informed the doctor and the police. That's true. Zach just was like, oh well. But then again, also, if he didn't die, then there was no reason for him to. Sure. Hmm, so you were the one who reported the crime? Indeed, I would think. This fact alone would clear my name of suspicion. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Yes, the cross-examination generally comes before the conclusions in this court. But if your testimony proves to be true, then the defendant, Zach Grammary, is guilty. And if it wasn't Zach Grammary, then the killer was you, Valent. And no disappearing act will get you out of that. The night of the crime. Oh, I just... He's got, like, the... The burgundy cravat, almost. <laughs> yeah. Burgundy is an awful color. <laughs> Bur burgundy, an awful color. It is. Yeah, I've only one of my seen least a few favorites. People, really? Yep. More so than like orange. Orange is not even in my bottom five color. What it's are your bottom five colors? Yellow, that swampy brown, oh, like oh, brownish the green. Brown, yeah, is bad. Uh, a lot of brown. You shades. hate yellow. Yellow, out of the. Like six main colors. Yeah, you yellow like is my yellow? least favorite. Oh, I love yellow. It's so. So happy is our grandma. And cheery. Yeah, our grandma. Loves you know why? Too. Bananas. You just you hate bananas. Like I some of it. Hate bananas. I wouldn't want to take bananas away from everyone else, but it, bananas okay. might be my least favorite food. <laughs> like, period. I have a funny story. So earlier today. I know a really funny I was, joke. I, no, this, is, this has to do with bananas. I was working a baby shower. <laughs> Does Mr. Wellington love them? <laughs> no! I was working a baby shower, and they were like, Oh, we have leftover cake. We have two flavors. Red velvet and banana. Who decided to pick those as the flavors? If you're going for red me. velvet cake, just get chocolate. It is exactly it's the same. Just better. The red velvet is not better. It is literally chocolate no, cake. No, I'm saying just... chocolate cake is better. Yeah. Red velvet is literally chocolate cake, just like a metric ton of red food coloring in yeah, it. Yeah, it's not that good. But the, I tried some of the banana cake. I was like, oh. This isn't bad for like three bites, and then you say, uh, "I don't know about this." And then you go, <laughs> "Yeah." <laughs> I haven't seen that in a while. Which, according to the letter, was eleven twenty p.m. Was that in um, which Justice for All? That was Justice for All. That was Juan Corrido. It's like, it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna like marry you, Celeste, and then it's like, oh look, I used to date her. You still gonna do it? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. In magic, timing is everything. Right. 
Consider the illusion of teleportation. If I were to appear on stage before my stunt double had left, how would that look? Why, it would reveal the very secrets of my magic! Now that you've revealed the very secrets of your magic to all of us, <laughs> let's move on. You went at the designated time, and what did you see? The smell of gunpowder hung in the room. Oh, is that so? So, you weren't worried for your own safety at all? I mean, you smelled gunpowder, yes? What if the shooter was still nearby? I... I did not consider this, to be honest. It is forbidden for a magician to have a good imagination. Uh, really? Isn't magic all about illusions and yeah. imagination? <laughs> How about this? Uh, you were the shooter, which is why you, were you weren't you were afraid. He's just... Come on! <laughs> no, now you are the one imagining. It is forbidden for a lawyer to have a good imagination. <laughs> um... Yeah, I was about to say, this is just getting ridiculous. <laughs> the witness will refrain from pausing so suspiciously before responding. <laughs> My forbidden imagination is starting to imagine things. My valent voice is leaking into my judge voice. That's eh, fine. <laughs> he could, I thought he was gonna sound young and hip. This was only seven years ago, and he's like almost 50 in modern time, in like the present day. Young and hip. Nope. Oh, he's 37. As opposed to like 45. Yeah, 37. That wouldn't make a difference in his yeah, voice. Yeah, that's true. Which brings us back to this reason neither of you could refuse. So it does, and my partner, he did not refuse. But Magnify wrote the same thing to you. Why could you refuse if Zack couldn't? Because I have a will of steel. Of course. I also do this trick where I bend steel bars, so perhaps steel isn't all so strong. So which is it? Mind if I continue? <laughs> this guy is a terrible witness. <laughs> this guy is a terrible witness, and I kind of... Uh... You don't like him anymore? I kind of knew something was shifty with Colonel Mustard. Tuxedo when he first, Mask. Uh, Colonel Mustard, Tuxedo Mask, the man in the yellow hat. Sir Topham Sir hat. Sir Topham hat. Uh, Greg. <laughs> Greg. He's only Greg now that he doesn't have the mustache. He's Greg now that he doesn't have the mustache, but, like... <laughs> but he's not Greg. He's, like, new Greg when old Greg broke his back. Old Greg broke his back? Do you remember that? That they no. had to they had to replace Greg because he. Was, I knew they replaced like all the Wiggles except Anthony. They replaced him. He didn't break his back. He just like really injured it from doing all the wigg Wiggles dancing. And Too stuff. much wiggling. <laughs> Too much wiggling. So they were like, "Oh, we'll just get like a new guy." Because this was when I was probably like eight, and I'm like, "The Wiggles isn't the same." Just get Greg. just get an Australian guy and dress him in a yellow shirt, and that's like, Greg. Th this isn't the same without Greg. And oh, yeah, then they, but they still called. Th I think they called him Craig. <laughs> That's actually great. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. He still had the yellow shirt, though. Right? He still had the yellow shirt. But I was like, <laughs> hey, Craig. That's that's brilliant. That's amazing. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. I need to look that up after. <laughs> I I don't want it to not be true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Deaf sweet kiss I gave to the clown. Uh... There were two bullet holes at the scene. One in the victim and one in the clown. You're saying the one who shot the clown was you? No doubt my partner Zach had said the same thing. Yeah, because whoever didn't shoot the clown committed murder. I better dig around here a bit more, and see what I turn up. Mr. Valet, let me ask you about something else concerning the crime scene. Namely, the bullet in the pistol, the location of the pistol, the number of pistols. The bullet in the pistol. In order to shoot a pistol, you need a bullet. Where was the bullet? I entered the room and took the pistol in my hand. The bullet was already loaded, ready to fire at any time. Oh, yeah. That's not what I was asking. A magician is always prepared, you see. Prepared for... One never knows when a miracle will be called for. A magician always has seven doves in his pocket and a white rabbit up each sleeve. Clearly we're dealing with the professionals here. Hmm... Is this bullet that was loaded in the pistol really so important? Quite important. Not important. It's important because the two bullets will be different depending on which gun fired them. Without a loaded bullet, we wouldn't have a murder. It's very important, Your Honor. Very well. Please add this detail to your testimony. What can I do but obey? How about disobey? The pistol was already loaded. I merely had to pull the trigger. Remember that same trust? <laughs> actually, actually, what really happened, because it was loaded and no safety was on it, it was just that it fired itself. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, what I was gonna say was, remember that saying, trust and obey, or whatever? Yeah, the him. Yeah, not him. 
<laughs> Trust and obey, but not Val Grammary. But not Val There's no other. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Forgotten Third verse of the hymn. Yeah. Every hymn uh, has I the third verse. I forgot the next verse. couple lines, but. Uh, Secret goes, tunnel! tunnel. <laughs> Secret I, tunnel. I really wanted to send that to our brother the other day, just randomly. Because he called us on the phone. Yeah. If the pistol was already loaded, something doesn't make sense. Why weren't the victim's fingerprints on it? You should know that we of the troop Grammary are capable of many things. One of these being the levitation of iron balls, without touching them. There's no magic involved here. The shooter was just methodical is all. He simply wiped everything to fingerprints. Can't really do much with fingerprints that weren't there. Maybe I should ask about something else? Um... I mean... The location we already know of the pistol, I think? The number of pistols, though, is what we should probably ask about. We do need to do that. Where exactly was the pistol when you entered the room? Atop a small bedside table it was. As if to say, here I am, take me into your hand, pull my trigger, shoot him. The victim clearly wanted to be shot. But why? Perhaps he wanted to go out with a bane. Yet we will never hear the truth from his lips, so all we can do is guess. Call him Maya Faye! She hasn't channeled the dude before. Can't you? Yeah, but you need to be really, really powerful. She's really powerful. Or get Pearl to do it. Since she's also really powerful, apparently. Maya's stronger than Pearl, though. Okay, Maya's powerful. Uh, well, she hasn't done it before. Also, she probably has PTSD from all the times she's tried to channel yeah, and almost got murdered. Almost got murdered, like, three times. <laughs> hmm, is the location of the pistol all that important? It's so important. Without a murder weapon, there would be no murder. It's very important, Your Honor. Well, you said that about the bullet, but very well. <laughs> Please add this detail. What can I do but, but trust obey? And obey? I took up the pistol from the small table and shot the cloud. <gasps> Why did you do that? I would think calling the police would come first. Then you know nothing of the relationship between a master and his disciple. If your master says die, you die. Do you understand? So you're going to die? Certainly not. It was but an example. In any case, I wanted to fulfill my obligation. A final courtesy to a great mentor, perhaps. Or perhaps not. Perhaps I'm totally confused. Maybe I should ask about something else. How many pistols were there when you entered the room? By which you mean what, precisely? Two pistols were used in the Zack and Valent quick draw shoot correct? One for each of you. You are well informed, yet. Only one of my old friends sat in the hospital room that night. What did Zack tell me back in the lobby? Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. And found there were two on his bedside table, two pistols. I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. Hmm, I see no problem with that statement. Only one pistol is visible in the photograph of the crime scene, after all. So you picked up that pistol and fired it? Indeed I did. Alakazam! Alakazine! Alakaboom! Hmm... Is the number of pistols really so important? Yes. The number of pistols is quite important, Your Honor. Very well. Please add this detail to your testimony. What can I do but obey? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're- Also, subtle feign. Uh, present day Valent only twirls his cane like once, and this and past Valent does it like more than once. Because he's getting old. I don't know. It's just okay. an interesting detail. Only one pistol was in the hospital room that night. With it, I shot the cloud. So you took the only pistol there and fired it. That's correct. And that pistol was this one, which was left at the crime scene. Good show. I see you too are a magician of sorts. And you're an idiot of sorts. Do you have any idea what you just said? I see the fire in your eyes as you glare at the witness. So how about heating up this trial a bit? These slow ballads bore me. Hmm, I've got a hunch, but maybe that's all it is. Maybe I should ask about something else? No need. On second thought, let's run with this testimony for a while longer. Alright. Then I inform the doctor and the police. So you informed the police. What did you do then? What do you suppose I did? Use my magic to levitate my mentor's corpse, perhaps? 
I don't know, that's why I'm asking. Now please answer the question and skip the sarcasm. After I made my report, I called the doctor, and we returned to the room. While we waited for the police to arrive, we discussed... Stomach medicine. We've confirmed this with the doctor. It all checks out. Stomach medicine? He praised Mr. Valant's knowledge of stomach medicine, in fact. Why is that important? Ah, it is an honor I do not deserve. But I accept. Both of Magnifi's students received the same letter. Both admit to having gone to the hospital that night. Two bullets were fired, and one of them killed Magnifi. Time to find the cracks in his testimony. Wow. This is now reminding me of another- I read this manga. Really good. But there was a part of it where there were this pair of twins, and in the story, it's like, oh, twins are, like, a curse. And if there's two- like, it, it'll bring, like, misfortune upon the land. So basically they were like, we have to kill one of these twins. Yeah. Which is terrible. Yeah, this manga got really dark. But this made me think of it where they had, like, the twins had to decide. Where it's like, you have a pistol in hand. Do you kill the other twin or do you kill yourself? That's horrible. I know. But it makes me think of this here. That, that was, like, the worst part of that manga. The rest of it was really cool and mm -hmm. interesting. It was a... But it was so crazy. It had time traveling in it. <laughs> so, like, that alone tells you... like Avoid time travel if you can. And unless you're making that, like, the crux of your story. I would say. And that, and that kind of was, there. it's this guy that's, uh, there's three people on a journey, they're all trying to do different things. One of them's this twin, one of them is this guy who got banished from his country, and one of them is this guy trying to um, uh, get this girl's memories back. It's like the princess of his kingdom. And they're all traveling together because they're all trying to travel, essentially. That's the mm -hmm. main thing that they're doing. And it's kind of like the crux, they'll go to different worlds, essentially. But because of that, there's definitely, like, huge loops that they travel through, where it's like, this probably shouldn't have worked, and you have to make all these sacrifices to make this future not happen. And it's insane, but yeah. Alright, cool. Thanks for my rant. According to the, 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 according to the defendant, Zach Grammary, when he entered the room, there were two pistols on that table. Two? One of those pistols he used to shoot the clown in the forehead. Then he left it with it in his pocket. Of course, this is what he would say. Unlike the hapless clown, we must assume our defendant had some brains in his head. Well, what about what Mr. Valent has told us? You see, there's something about his testimony that doesn't make any sense. What might that be? I told you I took the pistol that was there and shot the clown. That's your story, at least. But the rifling marks tell a very different story, Mr. Valant. Recall what Prosecutor Gavin told us. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with a victim- uh, with a victim fired from this gun. Shoot! <laughs> 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 with a bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. Ugh. Oh. Mr. Valant, if you fired this pistol, then you shot the victim in the forehead. Yeah, see, he's wearing, like, a dress. It's not a dress, that's part of his yellow coat. Then what is he wearing? Leggings? He's wearing pants! Have you never those heard are, of pants those, before? <laughs> those are some skin-tight pants! They were, they were baggy. No, they weren't. Unless if they were, like... Either they were baggy, or he is, like, the, has the most ripped legs ever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see them again, maybe. It's like Acro's legs. <laughs> order, Acro. order, order! Well, this is all rather sudden. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? Pr prosecutor Gavin? I owe the court an apology. Sorry. S sorry for what? You see, I was unaware that two of these unique pistols were crafted. The analysis of the rifling marks only proved the type of gun that fired them. That's because you didn't do the work. But, but that's not what you told us before. You said you verified the murder weapon. Which is why I'm apologizing to you, quite sincerely I might add. Would you hold me accountable for a mistake made in my youth? You're 17. That was just this morning! <laughs> I am still young. And I might add, it wasn't really my fault. If the defendant had only admitted he took one pistol from the scene of the crime, we would not be having this pleasant discussion now. Hmm. Valent Grammary? Yes, your honor. You were presented to this court as a decisive witness, but you've proven to be more divisive than decisive. 
He has normal pants, Marty. <laughs> Those look like leggings that are on ripped legs. Or just black pants. <laughs> 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 the black pants would be baggier than that. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it wouldn't. No, show, they, not it wouldn't necessarily. Show the muscle definition. You could see the muscle definition on the back of his calves. Or those were bags, because <laughs> those... the pants are baggy, <laughs> because <Okay>. they're pants. <laughs> <laughs> Marty doesn't understand pants. Really. I understand pants. I I was wearing pants all day, and they were black, and they were baggier than that. Yeah, not everyone buys the super ultra deluxe fat so <laughs> baggy pants like you, Marty. Fat no, so baggy. No, I jest. No, mine are like they're skin tight, not skin tight. They're like very nicely fit on, like on top, and then once it hits the knees, they kind of fan out. I don't, I don't know. That's pant, what pants do. Pant also, curves. he's wearing tall boots, so That's the pants true. go into that the boots. That might be what I was thinking of. I, I haven't worn boots in a while. Okay, it's summer. <laughs> You'll see in time. You'll see what boots really look like. The testimony pants. so far has merely been a review of the facts. <laughs> the proof comes next. Care to elaborate, Prosecutor Gavin? When Mr. Vallant entered the hospital room, the victim had already been shot. As his next testimony will prove, air right, the real fight is about to begin. Bring it. Very well, the witness will now testify to the court. Help us determine who shot what. Who shot what? I hate that sitcom. I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say 11.20 p.m. Okay. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation, then called in the doctor. Right. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. He was quite clear about the time of death, 11.10 p.m. And the one in the room at that time was my partner, not me. Okay. If that was the case, he said that the amount of time between him coming in Standing by the bed thinking he was breathing, and then having the discussion was five to ten minutes. <laughs> so that doesn't even line up altogether. If that was the case, nah. he's dead. The doctor, the doctor comes in, he's like, it, w it was 11.10. It wasn't 11.11. No, 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 no. It was 11.10. I know, because of how much blood and when it came and where it went and blah. I, I don't know how. How do doctors tell? They can't tell. Can they tell? We might find out in the cross-examination. <sighs> hmm, those times are rather close, you have to admit. You're talking about an alibi established over a matter of minutes. To use a ten-minute discrepancy as the basis of your alibi is easy to explain in this situation, Air Judge. For example, take our de debut single hit, 13 Years Hard Time for Love. Cue to the song, press the play button, and it will play for 2 minutes 15 seconds. Do it a hundred times, the result is the same. Their debut single is only 2 minutes and 15 seconds long? What a ripoff! Yeah. <laughs> Magic is a world of utmost precision. Hocus Pocus requires admirable focus. And in the time of death determined by the doctor, there is an incontrovertible truth. What if the doctor was paid off? Yeah, very true. Very well. The prosecution warns us that we're dealing with a rather precise times. Oh, what if the doctor was Palmeractus? <laughs> oh, that would be interesting. That would be kind of cool, actually. That would be cool. I would be happy about that. I would not be happy if it was, like, Dr. Hottie. <laughs> Direct your hick field now. Uh, and we can, ex can, we can expect the cross-examination to require the same level of precision. I would hope the defense refrains from its customarily broad sweeping accusations. Lest we blur the focus this case so clearly demands. Point taken. Baseless remarks will result in a penalty. Carry on, Mr. Wright. Carry on. Right. Carry on my wayward son. Well, we will carry on our wayward son next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah. Come for Marty, Marty, peace and out. Tune in next Woo. time. I can't remember how long the trial period is. We. Uh, you're, you're looking at me he, like he has, I know. He has I at least. Know. He has at least one testimony after this one. So. That's it. And then I said and, at least. And then apologize. We I know everything now. Comes yeah, that's how court. that works. That's how it happens. This is all guys. just Apollo's dream. Yeah, no, that's what it's Apollo's crazy fever dream. You know when he puts on the bracelet, oh, and he's the, like the bug eyes, da, 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 da. the bug eyes. That's, then that's he's like, not how he's the force works. It. No, or, no, it's like the, it's like um when the avatar goes into the spirit world. That's not how the force works. <laughs> you, you, sit down, you sit down and like your eyes turn white, and then you're just like you come back and you're like I know everything. 
That's how it works. So Apollo is the Avatar. That's my yes! prediction. Well, we'll have to see that in the future. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless. Thank <laughs> you.